For the last three to four years, Nikocado Avocado has posted many mukbang videos of himself eating or binging on large amounts of food. For much of 2020, he posted to his channel almost daily, and controversy has never been too far away. Since his channel transitioned from vegan to mukbang, Nikocado has displayed a pattern of grotesque behaviour, and he has been accused repeatedly of using his platform to bully and harass many of his fellow YouTubers, and he has continuously towed the line of YouTube standards. Now, while I have no interest in him as a person, it has become clear that his videos and behaviour have become more and more erratic over the last three to four years, and this has led many people to raise valid concerns about his psychological and physical well-being. And before we jump into the video, just a quick reminder as always that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So the first area that Nikocado will be running into issues will be in his mouth. We can see his dietary patterns are rich in processed refined sugars, carbohydrates, and also fats. Now, not many people realize that we have many microbiomes in our mouths, and like the one in our gut, when things are not kept in equilibrium, we can run into problems. Because of his eating patterns, Nikocado is likely to have significant accumulations of germs in his mouth, and when these germs and bacteria combine with the food, the enamel in his teeth will be attacked. This is just like in the gut, when you have dysbiosis and you are not giving the gut the fiber that it needs, then the bad bacteria will start eating and breaking down your gut lining, and this is a major way that intestinal permeability starts. So back to Nikocado's mouth, he will be very likely to be having gum and teeth problems. In fact, some of the most recent studies in this area have shown that obese people are 5.9 times more likely than those who have normal weight of having severe gum disease. Obese people are also much more susceptible to mouth and tongue cancers. The next area that Nikocado is likely to be having issues is his throat and chest through gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. Now occasional heartburn can happen to anyone, but being significantly overweight is one of the most common causes of GERD. You have stomach acid in the gut to liquefy the food so that it can be passed off to the small intestines for your body to absorb the macro and micronutrients that it needs. When you are obese and you have fat accumulations in the gut, then this can put pressure on the stomach, and this pressure forces the stomach acid and also the stomach contents up into the esophagus. This pain and discomfort for some people can be debilitating, and if the person doesn't want to make the necessary dietary changes, then some people will have no other choice than to medicate. If you are experiencing GERD over the longer term and you are obese, then you are approximately two to four times more likely than a person of normal weight to develop esophageal cancer. Moving down through the gut, we have the small intestines and also the large intestines. And because of the sheer volume of food that he is consuming, then he will be at a significantly increased risk of dysbiosis in the gut and also infections in the gut, such as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or even problems in the colon with excessive fermentation of fibers and also carbohydrates. And this is abundantly already clear that Nikocado is already experiencing problems with either the small intestines or colon or both. Neighbors. These types of dysbiosis issues in the gut can cause all manner of issues from upset stomach, nausea, constipation or diarrhea, bloating, chest pains, fatigue, and even things like anxiety or depression. When you have these levels of gut issues, you are also more susceptible to autoimmune diseases such as thyroid disease or even psoriasis. This is often the case as the dysbiosis in the gut starts breaking down the intestinal wall lining and then you get a lot of undigested foods and proteins in the body that can cause inflammation and also your immune system can be triggered into attacking your own body. These problems over the longer term will put you at a significantly increased risk of stomach cancer, small intestinal cancer, colon cancer, and also bowel cancer. Around the small intestines, you also have a few important organs that can be severely impacted when you are obese and eating way too much. You have the liver that produces bile that is stored in the gallbladder to break down the fats that you are eating, and you also have the pancreas that produces pancreatic enzymes to break down proteins, fats, and carbs. Now, most people will know the links between obesity and also fatty liver, and this can cause all manner of issues to the function of the liver. 
Obesity also puts the person at a significantly increased risk of gallstones that can cause infection and eventually may require the gallbladder to be removed. As I said just now, the gallbladder stores bile to emulsify fat. Nikocado's gallbladder clearly won't be able to keep up with the bile production needed to break down the amount of fat coming into his body and this kind of pressure on the liver and gallbladder over the longer term will put him at a significantly increased risk for both liver and also gallbladder cancers. It's a similar story with the pancreas pancreas, the pressure put on the pancreas to constantly produce pancreatic enzymes will be overwhelming in his body and again this will put him at an increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. I would imagine with the pressure that Nikocado's digestive tract is put under with his eating patterns, then I'm sure he will be experiencing a lot of pain and discomfort on a daily basis. Peripherally to the digestive tract, Nikocado will also have a whole host of potential additional problems in his body. For example, fat stored around the neck can put pressure on the airway and this can make it difficult to sleep at night. This can ultimately lead to a condition called sleep apnea, where breathing may stop for short periods of time during the night. When I go to sleep, I have to wear this concoction, this mother device. It has to pump some air into me. I look like a mother snoop a loop -a -list. It looks like a big old pig, like a elephant pig coming out my face. Beyond this, there is also a very real concern for Nikocado with his heart health. For obese people, their heart will be working significantly harder in order to pump blood around the body. This will ultimately lead to high blood pressure, which is also known as hypertension. And as many of you are aware, high blood pressure is one of the leading causes of heart attack and also strokes. When we talk about the potential problems in Nikocado's body, it is not possible to talk about his health without discussing his endocrine system and also his diabetes risk factors. It would be a reasonable assumption to make that over the last four years since Nikocado has been doing mukbangs and his weight has been increasing consistently, that his body cells will be becoming more and more resistant to insulin. Insulin is an endocrine hormone that enables glucose to enter your cells and ultimately produce adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency that your body runs on. The more Nikocado's weight increases, the more he will become resistant to insulin and the glucose won't enter the cells in the correct manner and ultimately he will be experiencing higher and higher blood sugar levels. Now I haven't seen any video from Nikocado talking about diabetes, but I think it will be very likely that he will be suffering from either pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes and as a result it makes him much more susceptible to heart disease, strokes, amputation and also kidney disease. As of June 2021, Nikocado also weighs in excess of 300 pounds. This weight will be causing a deterioration of his bone density and also his muscle mass. And you will often hear many doctors refer to this as osteosarcopenic obesity. It just simply means heavy pressure put on the joints that can lead to significant pain and joint deformities. Another problem which is abundantly clear when watching Nikocado is the toll all of this is having on his mental well-being. When I look at myself, I sometimes don't recognize myself. I say, who are you? And it is now clear that obesity and mental health problems will often go hand in hand. Now there can be many root causes of mental health issues, so it could be genetics, it could be infections in the gut such as SIBO, it could be food intolerances and sensitivities, and it can obviously be external stressors in a person's life such as relationship problems or job issues. Now this video isn't about bashing on Nikocado or using his name to garner clicks, I genuinely feel sorry for him and I hope he gets the support that he clearly needs, but I am not making this video for Nikocado. I'm making this video for anyone who watches his videos and thinks this is all a joke and even worse, they may be encouraged through his videos to follow similar eating patterns. As I've said before, I believe there are real ethical issues and questions to be answered where he is literally eating himself to death every month while being paid a lot of money and ad revenue all under what some people would determine as entertainment. If you enjoyed watching this video, then be sure to check out this one because it's a banger. And the only other thing that's left for me to say is to remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.